If you've been watching my videos for some time now, you know we're no strangers to content farms, ridiculous life hacks, and dodgy animated story time videos. We've already talked in the past about channels like 5 Minute Crafts or Actually Happened, RIP. But one that I always wanted to make a video on but never got the chance was Troom Troom. Yes, THE Troom Troom. Now, Troom Troom is an interesting case study for a variety of reasons. Like most successful kids content channels, it started off with crafts, useful tips and tricks, and a generally positive overall vibe. But if you look at their content today, you'll find a wildly different channel than what they initially set out to represent. So how did they go from creative walkthrough tutorials to an impressive but controversial rise to success? We're also going to look at the latest trend that Troom Troom has been milking to exhaustion. But first I want to give a shout out to our sponsor for today, Dragon City. Dragon City is a free to play game where you can collect different types of dragons and build your own dragon empire. We're talking thousands of different types of dragons that you can breed, hatch their eggs, feed them so they can evolve, you train your dragons and strengthen their abilities, and take them to battle. There are several events every week and the brand new battle pass that unlocks rewards and new dragons. There's even custom dragons based on specific YouTubers, the latest one for example being Carl Jacobs. And if you download the game right now, you get a free reward of 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the gear dragon. Note that the reward is only available for 7 days. Make sure to use my custom link in the description so that they know you came from this channel. Thanks to Dragon City for supporting us. Now let's get back into the video. The flagship Troom Troom channel was started in 2015 by two Ukrainian gentlemen who chose never to reveal their actual identities. For about two years, the channel struggled to get any kind of meaningful traction, but that didn't stop them from tinkering with the content and trying out all kinds of different formulas. And so eventually, in 2017, Troom Troom struck gold when they figured out that they didn't need to produce accurate crafts videos, but instead lean into absurd concepts and exaggerated thumbnails filled with bright colors and nonsensical photoshopping. They also introduced a female narrator whose voice became increasingly high-pitched and annoying as time went on. Going from this Today we are going to learn how to make an easy pumpkin Halloween decorating without carving to this These desks are so boring! I love college! Let's get started! It's lunchtime! Bon appetit, everyone! The narrator would also tell the viewer obvious things that were already known by looking at the video with their eyes. All of this provided endless opportunities for content creators to roast Troom Troom, some even dedicating entire channels to simply commenting absurd hacks and pranks uploaded by the Ukrainian channel. Ironically, Troom Troom seemed to appreciate this and even leaned into the critical videos made on them. And for a while, this seemed to foster an endless loop of content creation and attracting watch time for both sides. Troom Troom was getting more popular through the exposure they got, and YouTubers were more or less guaranteed to get views by talking about it. But eventually, the channel started to lose steam, whether that had to do with times changing and new trends replacing what had made them successful, or people simply got used to the same formula that Troom Troom was always employing for their content, it's at this point unclear. Regardless, their monthly view count went from 400 million views in August of 2020 down to around 50 million views over the course of several months. But if you thought the creators of Troom Troom would simply lay down their weapons and surrender, you were mistaken. Because by browsing the latest videos uploaded to their channel, it looks like they've been pushing a particular type of content over and over and over and over again. And I believe it's worth taking a look. Possibly one of the core fascinations of the public ever since the world was split into social classes was that of working class individuals dreaming of somehow entering the upper class by way of a sudden unexpected event. Mark Twain's The Prince and the Pauper stands as the perfect example, telling the story of two identical boys, one who is poor, the other who is a fictional version of Edward VI of England. They somehow stumble upon each other and decide to switch places, the poor kid becoming prince and the prince taking on the life of a regular child. George George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion is also a good example, where a phonetics professor named Henry Higgins picks up a common flower girl named Eliza and begins an experiment with the goal of getting her to pass as a duchess among the high society. Even in recent media, movies like The Princess Diaries, Pretty Woman, or Trading Places all convey similar plots. So it must have been obvious to the Troom Troom guys that there's something to this formula, that there is a timeless demand out there for such stories, and so they started supplying the content with adaptations of the same idea in their own style. The result, however, was not quite on par with their predecessors. 
A billionaire family has a lot of money, but the rich couple doesn't have kids. Okay, that's a fairly straightforward premise. Let's see what they do with it. Look, it's a stork. He's carrying something. What a stroke of luck. We will have a baby. Open it up. Is it money? But we don't need them. Why was the stork carrying money in the first place? It probably got back to its drug trafficking boss and they were like, Okay, stork. I'm running out of patience here. What did you do with my money? Let's just say that stork was probably never seen again, or at least not without a few toes missing. Not all dreams come true. <laughs> Honey, let's adopt a baby. Great idea. Wait, you never thought of that before? You needed a freaking stork to drop off a bag of money into your lap to come up with the idea of adopting? I'm the head of this place. What brings you by? We want to adopt. That's wonderful. I have someone in mind for you. Mia, come here. What? Who are these clowns? Mia, go home with your new parents. Your things are packed. No, wait. You made my dreams come true. Wait, that's all it takes to adopt a kid? You just go to some dude's office and he just gives you a random kid, bags packed and everything. So they take her home, they give her a makeover, discount Meryl Streep offers her expertise in finding out the right look for the girl in exchange for an unspecified handful of cash. They take Mia to the mall, you know, as billionaires do. Everybody knows how to have fun. Looks like Mia's parents got so carried away, they forgot about their daughter. Let's try something else. Hello. I was wondering, how's Mia doing? Doesn't this guy have an orphanage to run? How is he on call 24 seven for this one family? Anyway, they realize they lost their newly adopted daughter. They freak out for a few minutes and then they bump into the orphanage dude who I can only guess teleported to their location despite them never actually telling him where they were. And it all ends on a positive note. My baby, we were so worried. I'm disappointed in you. The family is together again. And then they go home and make snow angels on a pile of cash and throw money in the air and everyone is happy. The end. And then there's this other one where we can only assume the orphanage guy grew older by the looks of his totally natural white hair and he's become so obsessed with boats that he shouts at his daughter when she breaks his latest construction. He always thinks about his boats. I've had enough, I'm leaving. There may be a misunderstanding in every family. Well, let's see what the offended daughter's decision is going to lead to. I mean, I get the whole running away from home thing, but who writes adopt me on a giant piece of cardboard? Some rich rapper drives by, not even holding the steering wheel, by the way. I was a very poor boy, lived on the streets of Troom City, but became popular once. Now I'm rich and I'm witty. I can actually feel my IQ dropping with each passing second of watching this video. Anyway, he has this flashback of how he used to be homeless until, you'll never guess it, he finds a microphone in the trash and with that he becomes a famous rapper. I simply cannot. Do not be so sad, I'll be your dad. What do you think? I'm all for that. Well then, let's go. That's it. That's how you adopt someone in Troom City, apparently. From there, it's just the same story. It literally checks off the exact same succession of events. The makeover, the rich lifestyle, everyone is happy with their new life. But then, plot twist, her dad shows up. What do you want from me? Dad? Daughter, forgive me. I am so sorry. Come back home, my dear. Cindy needs to make an extremely difficult choice. Oh, that was awful. And my new parents are always so kind to me. What should I do? I know, you'll help me. I gotta hand it to them, they're masters at engaging with their audience. And people totally fall for it. Look at these. Pick the rich family, your real dad got mad at you. You should pick the rich family. Tell your father they can all be together in the rich family. You should go with the rich persons. I'm just scrolling through the first few comments and I'm baffled at how gullible these kids are. And you can tell they identify with the main character. They think she's a real person. That's the genius and the worrisome thing about these videos is that they speak to a dormant idea inside every kid's brain that the only way to happiness is if some rich family adopted them. And these are just two videos that I picked at random, by the way. There is an entire machinery pumping out the same story over and over again, only with slight changes virtually every single day. On one hand, I can't help but respect the grind, but on the other hand, it doesn't seem healthy to push this type of content and this message to naive kids who can't discern the good from the bad. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments below. And speaking of rich people, if you don't know what to watch next, 
Twitch. Check out this recent video that I made about the whole controversy surrounding how much Twitch streamers are earning. In my opinion, the backlash against them is complete nonsense. Remember to click the link in the description to download Dragon City on your phone and start playing today. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you again very soon.